All right, good morning. This is for my honors integrated one class. This is our 19.5 lesson. We have two goals today. We want to investigate the properties of parallel and perpendicular lines. Remember, that's my symbol for parallel. This is my symbol for perpendicular. I also want to be able to write equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to discuss the properties and then we'll review how to write the equations of the lines. I think this section will be pretty easy. I do want to say, again, I hope everyone's doing okay out there. And then um, the first assignment that was turned in, we all turned it in, so very good. Let's make sure that the second assignment is uh, completed as well. That's due today. So let's go ahead and get started with this lesson. So the very first thing we're going to talk about is going to be just the parallel, parallel line postulate. I think red is not a good color. Let's see what the color of the map. Oh, blue will work. <clears throat> All right, so the parallel line postulate. Remember, postulates are ideas that we accept as true. And what this says is two lines are parallel if and only if two lines have equal slope. Instead of slope, I could just say M. Remember, M is our symbol for slope. But two lines are parallel if and only if two lines have equal slope. So again, this is a biconditional statement. So I could have this and I get this. So I tell you the lines are parallel. You know automatically they have equal slope. <clears throat> if lines have equal slope, you have this. You can conclude that the two lines must themselves be, in fact, parallel. So depending on what you're starting with, that'll... that'll in, that'll determine what you end up with as a result. So let me just draw a picture to to, to illustrate this this concept. Let's say that we have a point, and at this point I have a rise of A and a run of B. Over here I have another point, and this point will also have a rise of A and a run of B. What I'd like to point out is that parallel lines never intersect. And since these lines are both going to be rising and running at the same rate, they're never going to get any closer. And so this is why we consider this a parallel line postulate, because we can actually reason that since they're not getting, you know, it's, they're always going to stay in the same distance apart um, through this, we can reason or we can accept the fact that this must make a this must be a true postulate. So again, two lines are parallel. If and only if two lines have equal slope or the equal M. And we can see again that they're never going to get any closer because they're moving in the same fashion and they're always going to keep the same distance apart. So that's the, um, the property of Parallel lines. Parallel lines property is that they have equal slope. That's what I wanted you to know. I want to talk about perpendicular lines and their properties, but this argument's a little bit more of an uh, of a multi-step argument. And so before I can make this argument, I need to introduce a couple facts. Actually, two facts. Fact one, that we need to um, investigate the properties of perpendicular lines. The first fact I need is the three angles of any triangle add to 180 or 180 degrees. 
Now, I believe this is something you should have seen in 8th grade, but if not, later in the book we're actually going to argue and prove this. That's the first ingredient for this. The second ingredient that I need to discover properties of perpendicular lines is if I have in a straight angle, you know that if I add one ray coming out of it, these two angles themselves must add up to 180. If I were to add a second ray, we can conclude that angle one, angle two, and angle three must also add to 180 degrees. So I need, I need this fact here so that we can say the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three, that must add up to 180 degrees. This is going to be what I need to make my argument. Or not my argument, but to, to lead me to the discovery of the properties for perpendicular lines. Alrighty. So. Let's suppose that I have a line that looks like this. And let's suppose that I can go from this point to this point using the following slope. I can run a length of A and I can rise a length of B. All right, so we know that this is a positive slope because it's a rising slope from left to right. We know that this line has a slope of rise over run and so the slope must be rise of B over run of A. Slope is B over A. Now, remember, all three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So I can say that this angle right here, Y, and this angle, I'm sorry, this angle are my letters. This, lang this angle, which we're calling X, and this angle that we're calling Y, and this 90 degree angle, all three angles must add up to 180 degrees. Now, by themselves, angle, the angle measure of X and the angle measure of Y, they must be complementary, meaning that those two angles must themselves add to 90 degrees. So we know that X degrees plus Y degrees must add up to 90 degrees because, again, all three must add up to 180 and if that's 90, that means that there's 90 degrees left over. So these two are, in fact, complementary. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an identical version of this triangle. And I'm going to draw it so that it shares this point. Its side continues. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to extend it like this. But I'm going to call this side my length B. And I'm going to rise as a, with a height of A. And I'm going to connect that. So again, I do have a, the identical right triangle. The, uh, the length that was with side length of B was, I'm sorry, the angle measure with side length B was Y. And the angle measure that was with side length A was X. Okay. So I'd like to just finish this last little piece to, um, to give me the tools to make my observations or my properties about perpendicular lines. So we saw here that this positive line had a slope of B over A. We, we made an identical version of the triangle. We put it next to the triangle that we had. And in fact, now notice I have a straight angle right here, just like I began with right here. And I know that my three angles themselves must add up to 180 degrees, right? And so again, I have three angles and I know that these three angles themselves must also add up to 90 degrees. Now remember, we know that angles measures X and Y themselves must be complementary or add to 90 degrees. Because all three angles add up to 180, I've got 90 of it here, so that forces these two to be 90. 
Well, I know that these three angles themselves add to 180 degrees. These two angles themselves must be 90 degrees. So what this does is it forces the remaining angle right here to be a right angle. And so I've built perpendicular lines. I've built them and, and I've built them in such a way that I can look at the slope and understand why the slope is going to be what it is compared to the other line. So remember, this line had a slope of positive B over A. And we can look at it like this. Running in this direction is positive. Rising in this direction is positive. So we have two positive numbers. I went from the left and up. So if I if I want to find the slope from this point to this point, I'm going to now have to rise in a negative direction, but I'm still running in a positive direction. So the slope of this line is going to be negative a over b, which is what we call the reciprocal. This The slope actually flips and the sign changes. And so I want to, I want to, I want to quantify, I want to put into words in a little simpler form what I've actually shown you here. So remember, I, 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 I set this up in such a way that I forced these lines to be perpendicular. And then in doing so, I was able to make a very clear observation about their slope. I know exactly what the slope of a perpendicular line must be compared to my original line. All right. So let's write down the property of perpendicular lines. And let me make sure everything is in the whiteboard and it's not a big waste. Okay, good. Okay. So we could, you could call this a theorem because we can actually argue it. It's not something we accept as true. Um, we'll just say properties of perpendicular lines. We'll, we'll call it that. Lines are perpendicular if and only if the slopes Okay, so I, I wrote this in a very mathematical way I made it sound a lot fancier than it is, all right? So when I say that they're opposite reciprocals, basically what I'm saying is one is positive, the other is negative. Okay, that's, that's me saying the opposite. The reciprocal, what that means is the numbers are flipped. Okay, so you flip the number. So let's let's just practice finding perpendicular slope. If I told you the slope of a line was 3 over 2, the perpendicular slope, which I'll just put that symbol down there, the perpendicular slope to that is going to be negative 2 over 3. Another example, if I told you the slope was equal to 5, the perpendicular slope to that, because I can call this 5 over 1, would be negative 1 over 5. I'll do one more example. If I was to tell you that you had a line that had a slope of negative 2 over 5, the perpendicular slope to that would be since that's negative, we have to use the opposite, and we flip the number, the perpendicular slope would actually be 5 over 2. So, there's, um, 
we've, we've investigated the properties. Now, you can actually even go a little bit further because there's something that's true about all of these perpendicular slopes. If I was to multiply negative 2 over 5 by 5 over 2, the 5's cancel, the 2's cancel, I'm left with negative 1. If I'm to multiply 3 over 2, I'm going to sneeze, by negative 2 over 3, again, the 2's cancel, the 3's cancel, and I'm left with negative 1. If I was to multiply 5 over 1 by negative 1 over 5, again, the 1's cancel, the 5's cancel, and I'll be left with negative 1. So another way to look at this, this, this idea is the slopes multiply to negative 1, right? That would be a way to very quickly guarantee that you have opposite reciprocals. You know, that would be the simpler way to do it. Or the slopes multiply to negative 1. All right, so I'm going to check off that. Parallel lines have equal slopes. Perpendicular lines or lines are at, that are at right angles to each other. Erase the picture. Lines that, are, that make right angles, their slopes are opposite positive and negative reciprocals, reciprocals. They flip. All right, so now I want to talk about writing equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. Before I start that, let's, um, let's write our formula to write the equation of a line. Okay, so it, it, like honestly, this section of the book, you're, you're going to be, you know, you're just going to be thinking, am I plugging in the same formula or am I flipping it and changing the sign? And then you just plug what you need into the, into the problem and you're, uh, you know, we're done. All right, so let's write our formula here that we're going to use. And again, you know, every problem that you're going to be asked to do can be answered by knowing the properties of the parallel and perpendicular lines. And using this formula to write the equation. Okay, so let me write down our formula here. Um, so the formula that we're going to use, you know, um, I'm going to use a formula that we used from last semester. I'm not going to, I'm not going to change it, but let me, let me uh, just write it like this. F of X equals the first y value plus the slope times x plus the opposite of the first I'm, you know, there's, there's another way to say this, but I figure that I'll just use what you guys know how to do so well, and hopefully that makes this a little bit easier, and everything does fit in the picture. All right, so you might be asked to write the equation of the line Um, we'll, we'll do two, two problems. We'll write the equation on the line parallel to y equals 3 over 2, x plus 5, and passes through oh, I don't know, 7 and negative 6. Okay, <clears throat> so again, these problems aren't very hard to do, you know, um, and let me just walk you through this step by step. Remember, to write the equation of a line, I need the first y value, the slope, and the opposite of the first x value. So let's, uh, let's, 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 let's fill out our formula right here. I got f of x, and that's equal to a number plus a number, and then it's going to be x, who knows, and then we'll close it off. All right, so let's find the first y value. You know, instead of writing it as an ordered pair, let's just remember that 
we can represent an order pair in a table form. And that's my first x value, that's my first y value. So my first y value is going to go there. Okay. The slope. Now we're dealing with parallel lines. Remember, parallel lines have equal slope. And this equation is in the form y equals mx plus b. Remember, m is my slope number. So I want to I want a slope of a line that's parallel, so my slope is going to be equal. All right, so I'm going to use 3 over 2, and then I'm going to use the opposite of my first x value. So my first x value is positive 7, so I'm going to use the opposite of that, which is negative 7. Now, remember, we don't like fractions very much, so we're going to eliminate this fraction. We're going to multiply everyone here by 2. You get a 2, you get a 2, and you get a 2. This only gets 1, 2 because this is considered one number. This will cancel. And now I have 2 f of x's is equal to negative 16. Um, it's not very good. 6. And then it's plus 3 times x and 3 times negative 7. So it's plus 3x minus 21. Let's put these guys together. So now I have 2 f of x's equal to a 3x minus a 37. And let's get this f of x by itself by dividing away the 2. And my final answer for this problem is going to be f of x is equal to 3 over 2x minus 37 over 2. Now, honestly, if I, if I was just going to ask you to do this problem, if I wanted to be perpendicular, this would no longer be 3 over 2. Remember, perpendicular lines, the slope is flipped and the sign changes. So now we're dealing with, and I'm going to put the negative with the 3. Sorry. Let me try that again. So instead of 3 over 2, I need the opposite. So it's going to be negative 2 over 3, and I would multiply everyone by 3 and do the exact same process. So, again, I, I don't think this is going to be very difficult for you. Remember, the, the, if I want equal, the slope's exactly the same. I want perpendicular, you flip it and change the sign. We can make ordered pairs into a table, so it reminds us how to find our first x and y value very simply. I do have a little bit of a... Um, of a way that I memorize the slopes for parallel and equal. Okay, and then I'll end it on that. Okay. All right. So here we go. So to me, the parallel symbol looks a lot like the equal. So the parallel and the slopes are equal. Perpendicular, perpendicular slopes multiply to negative 1. So again, I'm, I'm trying to use the symbols to help me remember parallel slopes are equal, perpendicular slopes multiply to negative 1. And the only way two numbers can multiply to negative 1 is if they are what we call opposite reciprocals. Um, your homework on this lesson is 1 through 22 from 19.5. And again, I hope everyone is doing okay, and I will upload the next lesson for tomorrow. So have a good day, everyone. And again, like I said, I hope everybody is doing well.